There exists two main systems of measurement. One is the customary system, and the other is the metric system. The customary system is used mainly in the USA and was originally regarded as the British system. It uses units such as feet and pounds. The metric system is used mainly by the rest of the world. It uses units such as grams and meters. This was adopted by an international committee in Paris in 1960 to set a standard for science. Fundamental units are measures of length, mass, and time, and they can express basic quantities of a measurement system. As you can see in this chart, quantities of length, mass, and time can all be expressed. This table also states the customary system to be in a measure of FPS, which is a foot-pound-second system. This is to express a unit of force, just like the gram from the metric system does. Energy is defined as the ability to work. The term work in physics is defined as a force multiplied by a distance through which the force acts. Therefore, energy is a property that allows one to move objects from one place to another. And there are several types of energy, such as solar energy, electrical energy, and chemical energy. So basically, all forms of energy can be used to work. There are three different units of energy. The first unit I'm going to talk about is the Newton. The Newton was named in honor of Isaac Newton, and 1 Newton equals 1 kg of the mass at the rate of 1 meter per second squared. However, note that 1 Newton is not equal to the weight of 1 kg. The second form of energy is known as the joule. One joule is the amount of work done by the force of one newton acting through a distance of a meter. The third and the last joule is energy actually a really small amount one of energy is equal to 4.186 joules. And one calorie is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one Celsius degree. Another common unit of heat energy is the BTU, which stands for British Thermal Unit. One BTU can raise the temperature of one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit. One BTU equals to 252 calories, in the United States, BTU is used to rate water heaters and even air conditioners. Heating values for fuels are stated in BTUs per unit weight. Therms, or thermal units, are used by gas companies to measure sales. One therm equals to 100,000 BTU. Natural gas at normal temperature and pressure has a heat value of 1,030 BTU divided by feet cubed. Therefore, one therm equals to 100 cubic feet of natural gas. Gas companies use American engineering terms, for example, 1 ccf equals to 100 cubic feet, 1 mcf equals to 1000 cubic feet, and 1 mmcf equals to a million cubic feet. The SI unit for energy is a watt. It's a really nice unit because 1 watt equals 1 joule per second. And since 1 joule per second is a very tiny number, we usually use kilowatts per hour when measuring our electricity. Think of it like this, a kilowatt is a thousand watts. And since each watt lasts a second, and we want the full hour, multiply the number of seconds in an hour. And so, you get that one kilowatt per hour equals 3.6 million joules per second. All that we just talked about can be used to calculate practical things. For example, how much natural gas is needed to power a natural gas plant? Well, suppose the plant is 50% efficient and generates 500 kilowatts per hour of energy. That means only half that energy of the natural gas is actually conserved. So the natural gas is actually worth about 1,000 kilowatts per hour. Now convert that into joules and then to BTU, and now you can just divide that number by the heating value of the particular gas which will be given to you. And finally, let's talk about solar energy for a second. Solar flux is the amount of energy that you can get from the sun at a certain location in terms of amount of energy received for a certain area. It's called flux because it changes depending on where you're at in relation to the sun because obviously if you're right next to the sun, you're going to get more energy out of it. So we have the solar constant which is 1400 watts per meter squared. This is what a solar panel would be able to absorb from the sun on earth if we had no atmosphere. But since we do, only about half of that number actually reaches the earth's surface and is absorbed. But it isn't sunny all the time either. If we count for nights and cloudy days, you end up with only about 240 watts per meter squared. This is slightly higher for sunny places like LA and Arizona, but lower for places like Seattle and London.